Good day. Have another uh, SEO Pros Hangout. Today I've got uh, David uh, Harry from uh, Search News Central, Verve uh, Developments, and SEO Dojo, where he and I are kind of hanging around as partners and doing what we can. And uh, Dixon Jones from Majestic uh, SEO is here to walk us through a great tool for analyzing and links and discovering a uh, new place to get links. So, uh, the original, so, uh, the one and only, everyone else is an imitator. <laughs> the yeah. is the worst <laughs> <laughs> or, or as he was uh, uh, pointing out before, or using their data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I wore the wrong T-shirt as well, but never mind it. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. He's got a Google shirt on, Dave. Eh? Fanboy alert. Well, well, at least yeah, it's black. It's alert. it's black and white, at least. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Most, yeah, yeah. Mostly black, I might add. Mostly black. Well, know. yeah. I mean, the long, long gone are the days of don't be evil. <laughs> so. Yeah. So how are you doing, guys? Oh, Excellent. Doing a little warm, but uh, awesome, man. And, uh, this week you're all hooked up uh, well, uh, Dixon. So, we're, yeah, I've got to apologize to anyone that was here last week. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was actually uh, had just come back from climbing. I took my I took my daughter climbing and myself climbing, and uh, came back in a bit of a rush and uh, set it all up, and it didn't work. So I apologize um, this time round. I'm all better. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, why don't we uh, start by you kind of uh, walking us through the Site Explorer and okay. uh, going into the differences uh, between the uh, fresh and historical data right. and when you may want to use one or the other. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, if I share my screen then with you guys. Just, uh... Please do. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, bring my screen on here. What the heck's happened there? Let's go to that. Can you see my screen? Now, we got it. yeah, we got it. Yep, you got it. Okay, so uh, so I just go to the homepage of Majestic. So what I've I've actually done here is I've logged into a Silver demo account. But if there's anything here that's uh, that's that you can't do for free, I'll I'll let you know as well. So uh, you know, uh, one of the things that the Site Explorer, Explorer is all about is that it's actually not all of our data. It's just the, uh, it's just the stuff that you can get really, really quick out of Majestic, and I think there's a, a lot of people have gone in, had a quick look at, uh, at Majestic, and then not realised just how far it can go. So I think what I should do, uh, Terry, do you want me to to, you know, to uh, take to analyse SEOpros.org, or do you want me to do something else? <laughs> right, if I can analyse this one, then Terry. Has he gone? Tell me someone's here. Sorry, I, I had her muted. Uh, uh, yeah, go uh, ahead, uh, Dick. Okay, yeah, you're killing me. Matt, yeah. Matt Cuts, MattCuts.com is a good one. Uh, <laughs> MattCuts.com is an excellent one. Let's go and do MattCuts.com. Yeah, so, come on. You hear him as well. Uh, Could be a bit dodgy, though. You know, I, I ran his, I ran his site through one of these. Uh, Toxic link tools, and it said eighty percent of his link profile was bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do? Um, firstly, you don't have to do it at the ho at a root level. We, we you can do any URL. So I'm going to mattcuts.com forward slash blog, um, and uh, uh, we've got um, around about forty three thousand external backlinks coming in to uh, to to the blog. If I do do the home the the, the root site the root uh, of the site. You can flip it around here. There's some buttons here to change it from dub dub dub, non dub dub dub, or the URL level. And this button here just uh, takes it all the way down to uh, to the root level. At which point he's got an awful lot more people linking into him. So uh, 1.3 million links from 27,000 referring domains. So the the thing that you said, Terry, was uh, what's the difference between the historic index and the fresh index? Uh, the fresh index are these big numbers over here at the top, and then these numbers down here. Uh, are currently the, the historic information. If you wanted to flip between the two, you could. You could just switch this button over here, and it will bring the numbers round. And now we got 5.7 million instead of 1.3 uh, million. Not to interrupt you, Dixon, but your yep. screen share wasn't showing. My screen share is not showing, or is no, no, sir. 
<laughs> right, let's go and make that work. Start screen share. There we go. See it now? Okay. Yeah. So now we're right. I'll start again there. So we're just uh, just looking at MattCuts.com, and uh, if you didn't see it before, I just uh, typed MattCuts.com into the homepage. I actually typed in MattCuts.com forward slash blog, but I've just shortened it now to MattCuts.com. And uh, so so this is the the very fast uh, first bit of information. And uh, the fresh index is uh, all the links uh, and pages that we've crawled over a 90-day cycle. So if you imagine, you know, Google Bot or any other bot wandering around the net, the net. If, uh, if it hasn't seen a page or a link over a 90-day cycle, then it probably is either a really, really bad link or, um, or it's, it's gone, it's disappeared. So for most practical purposes, the fresh index is, is perfectly good. The reason that you might want to use a his, the historic index, which if I flip this button here, it flips over to the historic data, that data goes back over five years. And so now the numbers have jumped from 1.3 million to 5.7 million backlinks and from 27,000 referring domains to 73,000 referring domains. Um, if you go and just quickly compare these sorts of numbers with these guys, for example, and see what they've got for the same guy. And I'm happy to uh, have Then I think, uh, what have we got here? Well, first we've got a bit of time, a bit slower than us. Oh, you're cheeky today. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know they were going to be particularly slow. And you gave me the URL to try. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, yeah, the other thing is Google Hangouts are bandwidth pigs. So. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, so, so is this one, obviously. I don't know what's happening there. We'll come back to that when it's uh, finished thinking. Um, and uh, so, so this is a day that goes back um, uh, over five, six years. And I, I, I'm, we're the only ones that have got that information. Where that's useful is if you wanted to go and find, for example, um, information over time. So you could go and have a look at mattcuts.com and see how things have built up over time. So if I go and add mattcuts.com to what I call the bucket, uh, we have a little bucket list. And all over the place you'll see this, this little bucket thing. And then you can go to your buckets over here. And you can start running all sorts of interesting reports and things from the buckets. So if I go down here and say, right, we've got MacCuts.com on here. And what I'm going to do is compare that with, say, ooh, uh, RainPads.com, which is probably completely irrelevant. And, uh, and we can track what's happened over a five-year period. So this is quite a popular chart. So now we can compare what happens with RainPads.com versus MacCuts. And this shows you the link acquisition rate for those two sites over since the 17th of April, um, 2000 what? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'd be going to check out those blips out. What was he writing about? What was, he, what, was <laughs> he, what was happening there, you know? So this is actually looking at it in the fresh index. So this is looking at it over a 90-day cycle. You know, that almost be handy for content development in that sense. You could, if you got a client, you could look at their blog for the last five years and see any kind of spikes, what caused it, you know, was it a promotion, Absolutely. was it something, something they wrote, was it, you know, you can actually do a little bit of past analysis on, on a client and what's worked in the past and what's, you know, it's, what's actually interesting. It's also really good. Also, if I put New York, a few websites in here, so CNN, BBC, let's bring in the guardian.co.uk. What you can do is you've got a two, a two organization that wants to be number one for you know, news, and, uh, and then you can go and have a quick look at the people that are on there and say, well, okay, the people in this market are, you know, have, are getting links at the rate of got, you know, in 80, 80 to a million links coming in in non-cumulative view that we've seen. Uh, and actually, if we put this into cumulative data, we can see that over... Yeah, might as well give us the differences of those two while you're at it, cumulative and non-cumulative. Right, okay, so the cumulative is just adding what we saw last month onto the chart, so they always go up. Um, so, uh, so, and you've got, you've got to bear in mind that this, this uh, particular graph includes deleted links in this particular view as well, so um, there will be a lot of links that, that, that don't exist here, but you can see how aggressive any particular business has been and compare that in a vertical if you put a few together uh, over, over time. So the cumulative view um, will just add what we've got. Um, the normal view, monthly view, will give you the totals month by month. Now there's, there's, there is um, some leeway in this data because of course 
here we decided to make our crawlers get a bit better and we started to really improve our crawl. Uh, same um, over here for example and everything jumps up. So there is another option which allows you to normalize it and that gives you data per million URLs that we've crawled. So that will bring it uh, into, a, into a, better, uh, a better and more even um, uh, system so we can start seeing who, who's the best. But basically here the BBC has got a larger market share than, uh, than um, CNN.com uh, and they've got slightly larger share than well, they've got larger share than New York Times and, uh, and, um, and The Guardian. Although The Guardian over recent years has, uh, has really come on quite well and they're starting to get stronger. So, um, but this is, this is a reason why you use a historic index because you can see stuff over, over time. Um, the other reason you might want to use historic index is uh, if you wanted to go and have a look at, um, and I think I said this to you before, uh, David, um, JC Penny, um, when JC Penny had some, they've cleaned out uh, some issues, <laughs> some issues. challenges. Yeah, I don't know if I've spelled their uh, spelled their site right here. Um, information. If I've got the right URL, we can see that they suddenly created huge numbers of links over over a period, and uh, so we can see what those are. And actually, we've still got all that data in the historic index, so you can pull that information back. But <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Wow, nothing, <laughs> nothing dodgy there at all. No, no, nothing at all. Nothing at all, mate. No, no. I, I tell you, there's another one though uh, that I think is really good, um, and I use. Um, uh, I think it's Obama.com. 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 Data is all sitting here, and I got the right. Like your URLs, I have. Yeah. So this spike here from MittRomney.com happened about four days before the uh, the first presidential primary, and uh, so if you put this on a cumulative, uh, they were trying to do some, well, whatever they were trying to do, uh, they uh, they suddenly decided to create these links pretty much overnight, around about four million of them. So whichever side of the fence you're on, that that to me was a, an interesting link profile, and we found that they. Uh, they put out press releases on large numbers of, uh, of um, Republican uh, interest group uh, sites uh, a few days before the presidential primary, so uh, that was kind of interesting. So anyway, back to the main story. <laughs> uh, so let's go to MacTats.com. Uh, Dixon, I had a yeah. question. Uh, if you're doing a, a crawl, right, what do you yeah. use for your seed so you can determine what's fresh? Like, that would determine. How fresh the results are, how fresh the seed was to start, right? Well, our our, our crawl is is continual, so we're seeing, uh, you know, we're updating this this information updated six minutes ago, so it's pretty much updated since we've been on air. Um, we're we're um, we've got what's it, 443 uh, billion URLs in the fresh index uh, now. Uh, so we divide that by by 90, you'll get an idea of just how many uh, pages we're, we're crawling a day. So we should be seeing most pages every day. And if we go uh, and have a look at the MacCuts blog, for example, uh, and have a look at the backlinks, and just nip in here, you'll see that we see most of this stuff most days. So uh, this link from seobook.com, we saw near the start of our index, which is 90 days ago. This left-hand sign means it was probably there before the start of the 90-day cycle. Um, and then it was still there on the 14th of July. You know, this one we saw, we saw on the 14th of May, we, we, but we knew it was deleted on the 16th of May. Um, you know, the 15th of July is, was what, only a couple of days ago, so this data is updating pretty quick. So um, it's not so much a case of a seed set. We're, we should be indexing um, most of the web by now. The question is which ones do we do and in which kind of order? Um, and we've now, in the last uh, last um, uh, few uh, weeks or months, we've uh, got a little bit cleverer with our crawl technology to um, better understand which pages are a important and uh, and if they're important, we're more likely to recrawl them. Anything up to every hour, um, and uh, if they if they're also um, how are you how are you judging importance? I guess AC rank and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, we, well, AC rank was an old metric now, so oh, so okay, so. so so we're using a combination of citation flow and trust flow, but right. we're also making some other intelligent stuff, uh, information about the site, working out some other intelligent stuff. So uh, so we've got a, a data crawler uh, controller which uh, goes and tells all of our bots uh, which ones to do next, uh, and so I don't know. 
if it's worth explaining how we collect the data, but uh, we have uh, a large project around the world where ISPs all around the world are uh, are crawling with their spare bandwidth. So we have a, a pretty um, effective and efficient blog system. So uh, we're we're one of the only real big bots um, crawlers out there that is crawling from all over the world. So if you take Googlebot for example, its crawl is pretty much always done from from Mountain View, um, and if you take, you know, Bing, it may be done from a few data centers, um, but uh, we're we're crawling from could be from from many different countries, um, and we could see the site from many different countries in the same same day potentially. So, uh, so in, so so basically, we should be seeing most stuff, um, and uh, where we do use a seed set is in our flow metrics, and I'll come come on to that in a bit. Uh, shall I just uh, go through these tabs here? So this is the uh, the main site explorer. If you, if anyone gets bored um, or wants to sort of dig down, they can click on a play video button on most of these things as well, uh, and it'll uh, bring up a little video that's probably more eloquent than I am, because uh, we use Mel Carson because he's got a very posh English voice and you know. <laughs> the Richard Attenborough. He is. He's Richard. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, and he used to work for Microsoft before he started doing stuff for us. So uh, so he's he's kind of got that posh aura about him. So these are the uh, the uh, list of. Um, Domains that are coming back, and uh, Terry, you're saying that you you're only getting a certain amount of information out of here. Um, this data will give you um, even on a silver account. This this data will, will give you the first 5,000 uh, referring domains in this list if we've got them. But if you wanted more, you just click on this report, and this re this create report will give you absolutely everything that we've got for uh, for any site. So if you wanted to um, go and see. All forty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-two backlinks for right. Mac. Okay, so yeah, so the Explorer is going to give you five k, but if you want them all, then you just create a report out of from that Explorer. Is that what you're saying? That's yeah? right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We've got two. Ah, two, two, two. okay. So yeah. you're making the report after you got right. It. Take take a Terry. Yeah, take take a that. Yeah, think of the Explorer as just sort of your quick view, and then you know you know how we have we have our normal reports yeah. we keep in there. So essentially, yeah. just create a report from your your quick view Explorer, okay. and it'll give you all, it'll give you all of them. All right, cool. Yeah. So okay. I, I mean, and I'll do uh, that in a second. Nixon. Yeah. Uh, another thing I noticed, and uh, when you're asking for all of the uh, backlinks, for instance, it'll also list the same link every time you've seen it. So. If in that 90-day period you saw a link uh, five or six times, it would be listed six times. No, How do you make it so it just shows one. No, that's that's not true. It'll show you several links on the same uh, same domain, but there'll be different URLs. So uh, so so you got fidget.com forward slash blog. Uh, what have we got in here? Uh, okay, we've got, but we got another oh, link. I, I was I was talking about the uh, CSV files. Oh, okay, okay. Well, no, that should they should be different ones because I mean, but here's a good example of where you might get confused because here, unless you're really looking at it, you'd say these are these are two links from fidget.com forward slash blog. But one's got the anchor text Mac cuts, the other one's got Mac cuts head of Google spam. So there's actually two links on that on that page that we saw on the 21st of April. Oh, so okay. Listen. So maybe I just wasn't seeing it properly. I I thought it was something to do with you uh, index that uh, link twice on. In them, in no, we, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be. I mean, uh, you know, that would be uh, that would be a lot of storage for us to, to, to do. So, yeah. uh, but what we do is for every link that we've got, we'll give you the date we, we we record the date that we first saw it, the date that we last saw it, uh, and and the, the date it was deleted if it if it is deleted now. So we'll keep those three dates. But actually, um, we because we have two indexes, we've got the date that we first saw it in the fresh index, which is for an old link, it's almost exactly ninety days old. You know, it'll be 89, 90 days old because we see it towards the, almost every day. Um, and uh, but then we may have the actual first date uh, way back three or four years ago, and you'd have to go back to the historic index to find that if you really cared about whether a link was more than 90 days old. See what I mean? But there shouldn't be uh, uh, the same links appearing twice in the list. Uh, they should be they should be different links, but there will be lots of links from the same site um, quite often. Uh, but you can uh, can uh, filter those out very very quickly. Um, I think if I I'll go through the site explorer a little bit and then then I'll jump into the reports. Is that okay, Terry? And then I'll take it from there. Yeah. So, that's uh, 
Okay, so we got uh, a list of the referring uh, domains, a list of the referring backlinks. Uh, then we can start seeing what's coming in and when. So let's go and see what Matt Cutts has been up to uh, in his uh, in his. You know, you, you can pretty much see when he's done blog posts here. You know, so forty-eight thousand uh, backlinks uh, indexed um, for the first time on the twenty-fifth of May. So he did something on the twenty-fifth of May or twenty-fourth of May, I bet you. Uh, and then we you know picked up another thirty-four thousand. So these spikes almost uh, for for Matt Cutts almost bound to uh, correspond to to new posts that, that he's done. But you can just drag over this data and, uh, and pick this information up on the fly. So now you can see all the links that are coming in. Um, and, uh, and you can see them uh, in order of strength as well. So I really need to explain these flow metrics. These flow metrics are two numbers between, um, between 0 and 100. And they're logarithmic numbers. So it's, there's very few sites up in the hundreds. In fact, adobe.com I think is 100, um, very few others. So for every page on the internet, we've got these two values. And uh, citation flow is um, how uh, link-worthy a web page is. And then trust flow is where we use a certain amount of a seed set. But it says how trustworthy those links are coming in. Uh, are, that are coming in. Now, the great thing is that, you know, as you can see on this, this particular site, it being Matt Cutts, his trust is more often than not higher than his, uh, his um, citation flow. And the funny thing is that in a natural world, if all links were natural, these numbers would tend to veer to the same set of data. Because what we do with trust flow is we use the same maths uh, or same iterative logic as we do with citation flow. Um, but we, we start from a, a, a trusted set of hundreds of thousands of websites that we know have been peer reviewed. Um, and then we take the data from there. So after a few links, it should, it, you know, in a random world, should be a uh, similar sort of number. But of course it isn't. If you take a, a slightly more uh, SEO'd, um, uh, possibly manipulated website, you'll start finding that trust flow is usually a lot, lot less than citation flow. And that's a sign that the links have been coming in uh, are not necessarily uh, genuine. Whereas, uh, whereas this seems like a very genuine site and it's Mac cut, so we know it is. Um, and uh, so the numbers are fairly similar. So, yeah, so what are you using for that trust stuff? Like, are you, you talking like. Are you talking oh, like directory links and stuff like that, or what? What kind of sites are are considered well, manipulated we, we or untrustable? We formulas. So we did take a large set of of, of sites that, that that we knew were human reviewed, and we're 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 not really publicly saying the databases that we used, but we we used more than one. But we don't need to go back to them now. Now that we've got the system rough and rolling, we've got a pretty good idea of what's trustworthy and what's not. Um, uh, so we we could, if we wanted to, we could sit there and say, okay. We found a, found a new trusted data source in China that we feed some data into, and we could could change that thing around. But it, right now, it's working quite well, so uh, so, we, so we're okay with things. Um, and I think that you know, if you, if you have a look at the trust flow of different URLs, there are, there were some studies. There's been a few studies. Trust flow for, for uh, tends to correspond quite well with traffic. Weirdly enough, um, not that that's what we were trying to to achieve. But because trust flow also includes flowing internal links, so we, the, these, this data only shows external links into your website, but we do the maths on internal links as well. So you can have a page at you know, bbc.co.uk forward slash history, which is obviously linked to from the home page of the BBC, and uh, a lot of the juice will come from the home page of the, the BBC. Um, so it means that a strong site can start throwing its weight around, and that's why you're going to start finding uh, at times uh, Web pages ranking uh, well in Google with no external links coming into those pages is because all the juice is going through the main site. Yeah, it's passing it. It's That's my dream right. in life to someday have a tool that analyzes internal links. But so uh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I have a question about the citation flow and and uh, trust flow. Uh, the actual numbers. Can yeah. you put anything into them? In other words, if you're looking at your site. And you see a trust flow of say ten and uh, a citation flow of say five. Yeah, you would have, say that you probably have problems, eh? <laughs> well, I'd say you probably have work to do. I think it's it's, it's unfair to say you've necessarily got problems. Uh, I think if you've got if you've got a citation flow of fifty and a and a uh, trust flow of five, then you might have some some problems. But uh, but but really, if uh, if if both of them are, are low. Then that's that just means it's a new site that hasn't built up. Very oh, many. Okay, so it'd be more alarming if you have them out of sync really badly. If yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. You got absolutely. a lot of citation flow and very little trust. Yeah, yeah. citation too would be, you know, if you had like 40 citation and you had a 10 trust, means that it's linkable in the sense that lots of crappy links might be coming into it, and that's why the one is high and the other one's low is because the trust flow is lower because of the kind of links, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I uh, was great. looking at one the other day where the sites that were linking to it had much yep. lower uh, trust and... Uh, no, I mean, there's an awful lot, and to be, to be fair, things like our own site is 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 not faring too well out of out of that either, because uh, we've got some widget uh, a widget that um, was for a while was on every page of Demos France, and uh, so that was a, a huge number of links, but not necessarily a huge amount of traffic coming through. So, uh, so so um, people that that have widgets that tends to bring it down quite quickly. Um, so there are reasons why you might have a differential. It's just a flag. It's a flag to say, yeah, have right. a look, really. Um, but but sites that start having bigger trust flow than citation flow generally are pretty pretty hot sites. And I'd, I'd put just in, in uh, mattcuts.com into into that category. So this is you know 2,500 links in, and we still got links coming in that are you know solid. You know, Skrenker, uh, the guy that runs Bleco is coming in there. So you know. And this is two and a half thousand links down. So it's a uh, yeah, good one. So yeah. So um, so each of these links, we basically have the inbound link, the anchor text, uh, the page it's linking to on the site, uh, and then these buttons here just help us go around as well. So we've got if you want to go and see the website itself, just see what's at justillion.com, then then you can just uh, click on there and it'll go to the page. This is uh, another button for this create report. So it's the same as this little report button up here. This navigation button goes and says, right, let's go and explore the, the URL that we're looking at. So I can just press this, and it will just rerun a, uh, um, a site explorer uh, for, for that data. And there's actually no links coming into that particular URL, um, but that's because it's 2008. So, and gone. <laughs> so, so that uh, one just kind of runs it on the, uh, on the site that you're hot. working on. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you, yeah, so you can do, drill down on on, on the sites. Uh, well, on that's, the, pretty, yeah. uh, that's pretty uh, good thing to know. I never realized that was. What I mean, that was. there's a huge amount more that you can do here because because what you can do with this this bucket idea is you can say right, I'm I'm going to have a look at that uh, Matt Cutts' links and I'm interested in in talking to danpros.com. That sounds good. I don't care about this this fidget.com blog. That looks dodgy. But let's go down here. Wikipedia. Well, I'm not going to speak to them. So carry on going down here. Um, WordPressPT.com, that sounds interesting. I'll add that to my bucket here. Um, SEOblook.com, yeah, let's go back to the same wall. Now, are uh, buckets like folders? Can you name different buckets, like for, for well, a project right per now, se? Or? Right now, no, but we do, okay. um, but, but, but you can drill down quite quickly on those buckets. Uh, but you can export them as well, so you can sit there and say, right, okay, yeah, now I've got this okay. list, I can just export all this to a CSV file. Could you then save the bucket list there as a, a report? And yeah, call. no, not not at the moment. Not at the moment. Oh, so, okay. Uh, but but we do have we do have reports saved in folders. So let me go and get a full report on that because I think this is quick, uh, quick question, Dixon. Yeah, sure. Looking at the at the uh, screen share that you've got up right now. Yeah. I don't. I know it could be done with the CSV file, but is there any way here uh, live to sort this this uh, display of links by say by URL by date by trust flow that sort of thing it's it's easier to do in a in a CSV fact. Uh, sure. so uh, we well, don't have to go that far so if I just go and get a standard uh, let me get a uh, get it for the for the blog that's uh, it create report and um, we have different types of report so uh, okay what have I done here mattcuts.com does not appear to be valid <laughs> So, there we go. Okay. Then, uh, not sure. Ah, uh, we probably have not allowed ourselves to, to record them. I wonder if we might. Let's have a look at matcuts.com. Edit, edit, edit. <laughs> no, don't edit. Let's be there. That's dub dub dub. That's why. There you go. Okay. Because I was trying to create a report for a page that didn't exist. 
so uh, matcalps.com, so we can get um, either a standard report or advanced report, or we can get a tracking report. So a tracking report will just start tracking the uh, link counts and the trust flow and citation flow day by day from the point at which you uh, you start tracking it. So we uh, we don't store all the uh, the um, metrics for every single website over time, um, but you can do as soon as you want it. A tracking report will start tracking that for you. A standard report um, will quickly allow you to sort things, and it, this will go and bring in instead of the top two and a half thousand that was in the uh, the initial list uh, in a silver package. It gives you uh, I think seven and a half thousand. Then it goes up to something like uh, fifteen thousand on gold and twenty thousand links on on um, on uh, a platinum account, um, and you can get it at, at, a, at a URL level uh, or at a, or at a um, at, at a domain level. The advanced report will get all of them. So Matt Cuts, um, if you wanted to, to get mattcuts.com and you wanted to just get it at the URL the, the URL level of mattcuts.com blog, then yeah, you've got something like 60 reports a month that you can use um, advanced reports on um, and uh, it's not going to use, it's going to use about 11% of your allowance. If you wanted to get everything to mattcuts.com uh, that's a pretty big site. That will, that'll use uh, about a quarter of your, your monthly allowance from a silver account. It'll use less than one percent on a on a platinum account, I would imagine. So what I'm going to do, I'll just uh, create a whole advanced report from thatcuts.com while we're waiting, because that takes a couple of seconds uh, to uh, to go. Um, and uh, so that's going to bring it up here. And so here's where your folder system comes into play. Um, so we've got all these reports already. Oh, here. indeed! I have folders of folders and folders, man. Folders and folders and folders. <laughs> of, yeah. So, uh, so you you can start creating new folders and uh, and putting things in there. And uh, these these little buttons here, this shows that it's a fr uh, was reported using the fresh index um, as opposed to down here, uh, which was using the the historic index. As you can see, I've uh, I've been creating standard reports for uh, for map cuts in the past. It's not the first time it's been asked of me. Um, so this little button here means that uh, we've got new data since uh, since we last looked at this report. And we don't update this in, in um, this in the report until you press the button because you might be might have been working on this data and you might have been you know looking at all the, the links on there and the last thing you want is me to change all the information on you just you know halfway through your, your work on it. But all you've got to do is press on this button. We don't charge again. We only charge once per month for analyzing the data. How many times you get it? So you can update it um, every every uh, few days. And then that'll that'll just update the uh, the um, standard report and bring it back for you. So now we should have um, the advanced report here for mattcuts.com. And who was it that asked about the uh, the, the sorting? Because if I go go to um, the standard report here, let me just grab it. This is the standard report, and uh, so now you can really start um, filtering things down. So I'm going to go and have a look at the. Uh, the information. It's going to have a look at the subdomain, for example. So, if you wanted to have a look at all the links to uh, mattcuts.com, book in the uh, in the URL, for example, you can refresh this data here, and then this is going to start bringing this back, and we can start to see those links there. Now, right now, uh, I've set we we set this by default to show you just one link per domain, but of course, we want to see them all. So, we want to see all the links that we've got from uh, that contain. SEO book in the URL, and we can start seeing all of uh, the links that we we've got from SEObook.com coming into uh, to uh, MacCuts.com, um, and you know the anchor text that we we've got in there. You can also switch this stuff around and say, right, I want to have a look at all of the links uh, MacCuts.com that have the word spam. Oops, sorry, spam. For example, and that whacks it all around and starts showing you all the links coming in with uh, the word with spam in the uh, in the anchor text here. So uh, head of head of web spam at Google and stuff. So you can Where start seeing all the links coming in with a particular anchor text. The other things that you can do. So so this starts showing things in all sorts of ways, and you can order this in all sorts of ways as well. So you can sit there and say, right, I want to show, order it by citation flow, ascending. So that look at the rubbish links where sort of the lower links probably first. Um, or descending, uh, and you can say right, no limit, and again, I'll bring it back. You can extend it to more pages, more per page as well, if you've uh, got the bandwidth, so to speak. Uh, so now you're bringing all the information back. So you can you can really sort quickly, 
and this will bring this will be sorting on the first seven and a half thousand links in the silver package. It's also will be sorting the first seven and a half thousand links in a free package for websites that you control. So you don't need to pay anything to get this data for sites that you control. So MacPass doesn't have to pay for this data. He can go and get it himself. And what he can do is just go up to his account and he can go uh, uh, where where would I go? So Webmaster Tools verification is my favorite. That's it. So Webmaster Tools and uh, you can say right I'm going to verify uh, a URL um, and if you own Which is it, good because you know what I mean a lot of times you know I don't have you know, if I'm managing, if I'm doing client work, you know what I mean, I'll have them in my webmaster tools. And so for yep. anyone listening, um, yep. you can actually get the data of your clients without having to, you know, go through the pro the old format of verification that we used to do with Majestic. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, if, as long as you've got your clients put you in their Google webmaster tools, you can access all your client status. as well. It's really quick as well. So there you go, click, accept, and off you go, and it's verified all the accounts in your webmaster tools, bringing them all and working on them all out, and now it's got all that data for you. For uh, and you wouldn't have to pay for it. So you've got um, now creating creating reports and everything. So I've just got uh, I've got another site, murdermysterygames.co.uk, and then I've got some more which I won't show you. Uh, Dixon Jones. Oh. <laughs> Can, do, do you guys have any kind of a, uh, alerts? Utilizing the uh, uh, webmaster API is that how you're doing? Yeah. That? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's we've we've gone to links to make sure that we're uh, we're obeying you know every bit of their terms and conditions. So that. That message that you had there is, is making sure that you're aware of what you're doing. But the only thing that we're doing at the moment is is um, verifying that you own the, uh, the the URLs so that we can give you the data. Where wow. you know, that's that's the only thing that we're, we're using. Yeah, I was wondering if you would ever start uh, pulling their data into the data set as well. Well, we we got to make sure that it's within the terms of uh, Google Webmaster Tools uh, of, of Google. So one of the things that we right. never did, and um, thank the Lords. That we we didn't was take ranking data for example and start scraping Google because it's uh, it's a pet hate right now for Google and uh, if we had done that I think right yeah. now <laughs> for, yeah. as, okay. as, for a long time they've just done something yeah. about it recently. absolutely so we never did that so you know there's been a, some debate you know as, as to what we're doing but we we'll obey robots.txt wherever we see it and that includes Google.com's homepage so. Uh, or search results, so we won't we won't crawl their their search results as long as they've set their robots.txt up properly. Then uh, and you would have thought they could, mind you, you'd be surprised. Um, and, uh, and, and then so we we, we don't have <laughs> now there was an, there is a way in theory to bring that data uh, that rank data in from Google Webmaster Tools into um, out through uh, out, out of Google Webmaster Tools. But you can't do it at the moment through the Google API, so um, so we've chosen not to do that at this time. Yeah, and I think their links are just, uh, as they call an, uh, an example set, too. I don't believe that Webmaster Tool actually shows you all your links, I don't think. Do well, uh, one thing I would say, though. API, you can get all the links. Oh, can you? Oh, okay. I believe you so. can. You can get up, well, you can get up to 100,000, actually, Terry. Oh, okay. So, um, which if you got more than a hundred thousand, you don't really need to look too much for it. Well, maybe you maybe you do, maybe you don't. But incidentally, you can download that Google Webmaster Tools file, um, or you could download it from any other data source that you've got, and we let you upload a hundred thousand URLs in a CSV file. And surprise, surprise, it pretty much talks to uh, to the common the common CSV outputs that you've got. So. If you, so, so now that's almost a workaround for what I was saying earlier, which is, you know what I mean, yeah. if I put one in this month and then I put one in next month, I can actually look yeah. at the two by running the, the two different reports absolutely in there. This is absolutely the bit that I was, you know, you, you, you kind of alluded to last week saying, I wish I had, wish I had this, you know. So th this takes um, seconds to, up, to upload data from, from any data source. Um, well, so you could grab your, uh, I'm just to make sure I understand, Dixon. So yep. you can grab your uh, Webmaster Tools new links file each month and then compare the two? Is that what you're saying? So what you do is, is you can put those, all those links up, import all those links um, or all those URLs. You can put any URLs. It doesn't have to be yours. It can be anything, really. Um, and what that will do is uh, give a signal to our crawlers that somebody is particularly interested in those URLs. So we will then... Um, uh, allow our crawler to to um, adapt appropriately. Now, if you've given me 100,000 URLs all from the same website, uh, sir, uh, we're not going to go and have a look at 100,000 URLs on the same server because we're going to just piss off the owner of the uh, the website and probably bring it down. Um, so we're going to be sensible about it. 
but it's it's a bit it's a bit like the old um, submit URLs for for search. Right, engine. that's what I, I just realized now. It's as if you're just saying, "Hey, I want to track these. Add them to your crawl list." Yeah, that's right. So you're, you're changing oh, yeah. our, our priorities in in the crawler. So that means that you know if we haven't got any of those links now, then in a few days we we really should have. And uh, so you know. Uh, I mean, David was saying that what what we should have is you know you you advocate that you need all the data sets and and I and I absolutely agree you know but um, one of the things you can do here is you can sit there and collate it all and say right we only need all the data sets but we want to start with 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 Majestic because we can upload everybody else's stuff into here and then we can get flow metrics for absolutely every URL um, and we'll play catch up if if that's what we have to do so it's it's a really useful um, uh, tool. And uh, we, we try and make it really easy for people to, to update stuff uh, and put stuff in here. So um, there we go. Right, yeah, where was can, it? Can, yeah. can you create me an alert system that lets me know whenever bagger links show up? No. Now, there is, <laughs> there, is a, there is a guy that's done that. Um, so, uh, oh, no, I'm not kidding. I, 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 someone, one of the alert corporations we work with, they have you know, 16 different sites and countries, and their dot .com, um, the owner came along yesterday and went, um, what's happening? And it turned out there was 16,000 <laughs> Viagra links showed up over the last Ouch, ouch. So well, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you you might want to check to see if they've got any yeah. code on his on their site. Or yeah, that's the first thing I did. And it doesn't look like it, so I don't know what the person's up to. No, you know. no. Uh, it's but. weird. You know, I, 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 that's happening all over the place, and uh, it's it's not always easy to figure out what's happening. I've got to admit. Uh, so, oh, God, I don't know if you can hear my dog, I apologise. It's not, it's not my dog. Honest, it's my wife's. Uh, and <laughs> right, okay. So let's go back and have a look at these reports and have a look at Matt Cutts's. Uh, uh, advanced report so you get every single uh, link that we've got so within this report now um, if you want you can see all 1,342,202 links and for every single one of those we've got um, flow metrics um, applied to them uh, and data about them actually by default we assume that you don't want 200,000 of them here or, or nearly 200,000 of them because we've put some filtering rules in. So let's go and have a look at the filtering rules because now you can really drig down and see what you want. So uh, you've got all sorts of rules in here. So you can sit there and say, right, I want on Matt Cutts only links that contain, uh, that, that are on his uh, blog. Contain, um, include, so I'm going to limit to the blog or I'll sit there and just say it's going to limit to the blog page. Um, and uh, you can also exclude uh, sections of the site as well. So if you're using an eBay or whatever, you can just have a look at uh, uh, individual sections. You can then also have a look at the source links information. And this is where we've already got some uh, assumed that you don't want. So we've already filtered out ones that we knew were deleted. We were, in this particular report, we assumed that you were only interested in live links. So we also took out out text links. And we have this one called mentions. And this, this mentions one is really interesting because this is where somebody has uh, said uh, www.matcuts.com or http on matcuts.com but not actually linked to uh, Matt Cuts' page. So you might want to just do a quick filter and have a look at just the places where your website has been mentioned on the internet but not linked to. Because if there's one place you need to go and get a link, it's where they've mentioned it. So for example, uh, I, my receptional uh, is, is my agency. They, uh, Barry just uh, just um, sent me a, an email this morning saying, I see you're on uh, SEO Pros uh, today. Uh, I noticed that David Harry gets a, uh, gets a link to his site from, uh, from his bio, but Dixon, you haven't got a link to a receptional from yours. Can you make a point of noting it? So, <laughs> so I've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so, uh, Terry, the SEO Pros PayPal account is... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all right. We're, we're fine. Uh, um, so, but that you know, that would probably pick that kind of information up. So now we can uh, we can also start filtering out uh, all sorts of things. So this can be really useful as well for uh, tracking an affiliate uh, network as well. So you could have, let's say, a, a, someone's got an affiliate network um, where their affiliates link direct to site. Then they're all linking with something like question mark merchant uh, or affiliate ID equals four two six. So you could just have a look at all the links. That contain affiliate ID equals, 
uh, and you would just see all of a list of their affiliates, for example. So that's a, a really cool use of the system. Excellent. Yeah. You can also then say, right, I'm interested in stuff that has got a high citation flow and a low trust flow, for example. So you could start pulling out what your definition is of, uh, of dodgy links and spammy links. Or you can sit there and say, right, just give me the good links. So anything above 30, for example, 30 trust and 30 citation flow. So you can then filter that way as well. Or you can sit there and say, right, I'm actually only interested in, in, in ones that have the words um, in, 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 in the text. So, right, so even if you're doing competitive analysis, you could, you could yeah. you know, use your desired terms that you're looking for on the competitor, then pull up their highest ranking, you know, their best links instead of trying to dig through the whole pile of them and what have you. That's right, yeah. So, and then, yeah, absolutely. And then you can, and, and, it, and you can do this as much as you want to change them around. Uh, and... Um, uh, and play around with it. So I'm not going to change them right now. I'm going to go back to the report, if that's okay. Um, I'll go back to the overview. Whoops. What's happening to my... Sorry about that. Uh, so this is the overview, but then we've all got, got these other things that we can start looking at. So we can have a look at what countries the links are coming from, the anchor text, uh, we can see effectively the, the standard report in here as well, so all sorts of bits and pieces. But the uh, the real, uh, if you want everything in a CSV file, this is where you get it. So you go to download backlinks, click on there, and that will download all 1.3 million or 1.1 million, uh, depending on whether you want them filtered or not, backlinks um, and into a CSV file. And if you're uh, if you've got a, a modern enough version of Excel, then uh, then it'll load that, and you can have a look at every single one of them. So uh, pretty uh, pretty powerful when it gets to gets to here. Um, so then we can have a look down here and have a look at the top um, anchor text, for example, uh, top referring domains that are coming in. So we think top referring domains, I think that, well, WordPress.org comes in. We think Moz.com and SEO.com are pretty high on, on the list of links coming in to Mac Cuts, which I think is fair enough. Um, and then we can see that Moz has uh, 493 links coming in to, uh, to, um, uh, to MacCuts.com slash blog. And the best one is this one here. Um, and uh, from Moz.com's site, I would imagine as Moz develops, there'll be a lot more coming in from uh, from Moz.com. Uh, and the one, the strongest one coming in from SEO book is on the glossary page, for example. Uh, it was got links from Dell, so uh, we can start seeing them more. Um, and then from there, we can go and have a look at the uh, the top architects coming in, and have a look there as well. So that's where you get all the data. But you know what? Most people stick there and, they, and, and stick with this uh, this this uh, Site Explorer stuff, because there's so much more that you can do in here as well. So if you wanted to go and have a look at uh, the referring domains, for example. What's, a, what's the map tab? Map tab, good good question. So if I, we go, I don't believe I've used that one. So this takes the top 1,000 links uh, into the site, or top 1,000 referring domains, uh, and visualizes them as to where they are in the world. So we look up, uh, do a geo lookup on all the IPs. Um, so uh, if you've got a, a, a website that is um, focused on South Africa, you would hope to get a lot of uh, South Africa. Especially if you're localized. If you've got a local you know, campaign you're running for a client and, and it's localized, then indeed you yeah. want to start seeing more of that. Yeah, and where, where I worry is... Uh, geo distribution, that's pretty... Uh, if you could, you know, uh, bring that more... Uh, what's the word? Zoom in on that, it would be awesome. Like this. So let's see what's happening in oh, France. That, that would be it. <laughs> that would be it. So yeah. So uh, uh, you can drill in. Now this particular graphic only shows the top 1,000. But if you wanted to see all of them, you can go back into the advanced report, and it'll show you where where they all are. So if I go back to the uh, to, to my reports, go back to uh, the Matt Cuts um, report. Then you can also again export all this information. So now we've got all this information by country. So now we can see how many links are coming from every single country. It's actually uh, ranked by number of referring domains. We assume that you know, if you've got ten thousand links from one website, that you, it's really only one or one. But you know, we got fifteen thousand coming from the United States, but then we got two hundred and forty-three coming through from uh, from Russia, for example. Uh, then we've got EU links, Hong Kong. So we can sit there and say, right, let's have a look at who's uh, who's linking, and we can go and get a re uh, advanced report. We can go and have a look at the referring domains coming in um, from Hong Kong, 
there's filters on filters on Hong Kong, so you can see all the links coming in from Hong Kong. And really, there's there's not that many very important ones, but there are some here. There's, this is one case where we still got um, our legacy AC rank in here, but we can uh, we can go and get the links uh, back. And again, you know, if you want, you can export this data for CSV as well. So, does that answer your question about the maps? Great. That is yeah, nice. it does. Yeah, and that's quite handy. Like I said, especially for people doing localized campaigns and stuff, and and analyzing competitors in that space and so forth. You know. Yeah. I absolutely. think that'd be that's extremely handy. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, uh, I, the, another thing that's uh, that's that we, that we use oh, the lost links is also the inverse of the new links. So you can sit there and say, right, all of a sudden on this day he lost. It would appear that he lost a whole lot of links. It's just grab over here, and we can see what happened to all these links. He started losing. He lost a site wide from. Barbarpandy.com, I suspect. So. Paid link. Um, Paid link. <laughs> Advertiser at barbarpandy.com, so, you know, <coughs> clearly, clearly they were upset about it, but hey, it's a no follow, so, you know, probably didn't count for them anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, the other thing, then, then you can uh, quickly have a look at things at, by Anchor Text as well. Uh, and I quite like this. Go oh, <laughs> Google is evil. Let's go and see who thinks Google is evil. Uh, and uh, so now we can, we can drill down here and we can say, right. These are the links that are coming in with the anchor text Google is evil, evil into a website. Again, you can download to CSV and get more of those, or you can get more on the screen. So now we can start seeing, and for each of these, we can see the strength of them as well. So uh, so a lot of these are, are, are no-follow. No one really wants to do a follow link to Matt Cutts because we don't trust him. Uh, and uh, <laughs> sorry, Matt, if you're watching, I do apologize. I'm just kidding. Uh, and, uh, and, then, um, and then also, if you want to go and flip that around and have a look at the, the Number of referring domains. So you can sit down and say, right, okay, this Swedish website seems to be linking a lot with 289 with Matt Cut with with, uh, with Google is evil in the uh, text, and again, there seems to be uh, all no followed. So I suspect there's some, I suspect there's some uh, Google whacking effectively in here, Google bobbing in here around the phrase Google is evil, evil really that particular phrase. Uh, so I suspect. <laughs> I suspect that's going to it's okay. It's okay. Google bombing doesn't work, remember? So don't worry. <laughs> well, I don't know. Work let's, at all. Let's let's go and ask. Uh, hang on. Let's see see what Google thinks about uh, about that phrase. Uh, Guardian. Well, some Prism stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. It, it looks like Google is uh, is currently. Not appreciating uh, that, that Matt Cutts is in that list, so Google's Google's done it and, right. And job, and job. Mm. Okay, so then the last one we got on here. Well, we got link profile, which is kind of just a, a pretty picture, really. So uh, because we were actually looking at, at the individual page of mattcutts.com uh, slash blog, there's obviously only one page in the list. But if we flip it back to the domain, then we can have up to the top two and a half thousand. Uh, Pages listed here, and again, you can have more if you pull a report. Out. Well, so so now you can have a look at um, all of the pages into the site, and we can see which are the strongest pages. And uh, it's interesting because um, Matt Cutts doesn't really use anything on his homepage, even though he's got uh, a lot of links going into the homepage of his website. The most important page on Matt Cutts' site, by a long way, is his blog page, which has a citation flow of 60 and trust flow of 68. Which for a personal blog is huge, you know, up up near the 70s sure. is Matt personal blog, um, and uh, and his homepage is actually way way down. It's only uh, I don't know. You ask a lot of SEOs, uh, they tell you that he, you can't trust him, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, 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 the internet would say they are trusting him on balance, but there's I'm um, sure there's a lot that say no, uh, and uh, and then you know all of these are, are pretty are pretty high. Um, and uh, and, that, and that's because they got a lot of links going into them, obviously. Um, I know we touched on it last. I know we touched on last week yeah. too. That maybe uh, Terry, maybe what do you think uh, the custom reports, like building your own custom things and stuff, we looked at last week, that might be useful for us here today. Yeah. So, well, I mean, most of the custom reports was done in uh, in in the advanced reports. So, uh, unless unless you were talking about something else. No, I think last week weren't um, you showing? I think. I think you had a screen where you were showing us that you can, you know, add and subtract different tabs and, me and metrics and stuff like that. I don't recall exactly what it was, but uh, the site explorer, you could move the tabs around as you. Oh want. yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's it. what it was. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'd forgotten we made that. Uh, <laughs> so what you can do is in your account. <laughs> I forgot we had. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> there goes that raise. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, so you can you can uh, change your your site explorer, for example. So, uh, I actually, you know, on a lot of times on my accounts, uh, I prefer to see the new li links every day. So I can sit there and say, right, I my default page, I want to have new. And I can bring that over here, and you can just use these um, to uh, to move them around, so that you can uh, change the order of the uh, the tabs. By default, um, uh, which is quite useful. So, if you're always wanting to see the new tabs, then whenever you log in now, you can just see the new tabs first before you have to t tab onto other, other areas. So that's kind of useful. Uh, then you just press update settings, and then from there on in, that's going to be the new the new tabs is going to be at the, the start of any search. But also, you can then change this around to say, right, I just uh, uh, I actually don't care if a if a link if a link link has been deleted, I'm not interested. So by default. We tend to show the, the deleted backlinks and light them up, but if you if you want them out of the system, that's fine. Then this button here will also uh, remove punctuation. So if you um, have majestic hyphen SEO and majestic space SEO, you might say, well, that counts as the same, really. So I want clean anchor text. So we're just going to strip out all the uh, the text there, and that groups that tends to group the the results into less variations of anchor text. Um, but you know, it, it gives you gives you meaning a lot a lot faster. Um, so good if you've got smaller sites, for example. Uh, then Site Explorer referring domains options, so we, you, you can change the order in which you search them. So when, when you uh, bring back the reports, as you said, you wanted to uh, bring things back by Trustflow, for example, descending might be better rather than, than the default. Um, we also have other things like Alexa rank and stuff in there as well, so you can sit there and say, right, actually, I want, uh, I want to, to, to firstly see the busiest sites uh, and then change it to, to Trustflow, although Alexa rank, of course, is, uh, is unique because you can only have one Alexa rank uh, URL uh, per domain. So you can then change these around. I tend to go for a Trustflow descending and then Citation Flow descending. And I change mine around that way so I can see things. But you've got the other options in here. You can do it by first index date, last crawl date, etc., etc. So really, you can have it your way. It's uh, kind of like the Burger King version of, uh, of um, data, you know, have it your way. And, uh, and and display it your way. You can also change this to how many different uh, uh, domains and things you want to display on one page. A thousand is quite a lot. So one of the uh, options I saw there, Dixon, yep. was uh, indexed URLs. Are they in uh, indexed by uh, Majestic, or are they ones that you know Google has, or search engines are indexing them? No, that's indexed by Majestic. So we have oh, two different. Yeah, I wonder. Because yeah. that's another thing I like to know is uh, what parts of a site are getting indexed by uh, sure. search engines. So. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, if we haven't got a lot of your pages, then that's then that is a sign that something's wrong there because um, we should have indexed them. But we've got two different things: indexed and crawled. So we know a lot of pages that exist, but um, they don't necessarily have to have been crawled yet. So uh, I would imagine with MattCuts.com, we'll have crawled pretty well everything. Uh, but with a, a lesser site, let's go to DixonJones.com. Uh, Jones.com. We're going to have a look at his links. Uh, if we go to the Pages tab, we report now on um, what we saw on every time we saw a, uh, a URL. So for most pages, you know, if we crawled it, we downloaded it successfully. But there's a lot of other things you can get here. There's a lot of pages that we will know exist, but we haven't necessarily crawled, and certainly haven't crawled successfully. So this one all looks better. God, there must be a real SEO involved in this. God, let's try and do something a bit more dodgy. Uh, so um, then have a look at. Uh, oh, I don't know. Give me, give me a website you don't think is particularly good. Mars.com. <laughs> <So>. You can't do that. That's really cruel. Uh, um. I yeah, I could pull up some bad links from Penguin. Yeah. I say yeah, some of our clients ain't there. You know, I, well, yeah, well, like, yeah, like I said, I've been vetting some for for various uh, Penguin things. Um, <laughs> and let me see. Um, geez, what can I find? So, I don't know one. Oh, I know one. It's got a. Oh, do you? Okay, good. Excel hyphen. There we go. Done it before. Here we go. So now we're showing other information that we got back. So crawl result here, home page, domain name, resolution, 
Um, this page here, which is different, um, is because one's dub 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 and one's non dub dub dub. That's blocked by robots.txt. So we still know it's there, but it's been blocked by robots.txt, so we, we don't go and crawl it. Um, whether they, you know, it's a silly thing to block us by robots.txt because we still know all your links. You just, uh, they just, you know, they just don't get their own data very well. Um, so then we've also got, as a result of that, you know, a lot of other pages that are not crawled, um, probably as a result. We know that they're there, but we haven't crawled them. So there's a, there's a particular example uh, of, uh, of, of what's happening there. So, um, uh, and here, uh, so, 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 so basically, we're now giving the crawl result of every single URL that, we, that we're seeing. Um, and also, we're telling you the date that we last saw it as well here. So, uh, so the date that we know that it was there. So the one you're not crawling, are they blocked or you just don't see the point? So, uh, so, so not crawling. Um, well, I don't know if that's blocked. We haven't got around to, to crawling it. It's only got links from, presumably, it's probably only got links from uh, from xlpharmacy.com, which is being which is we're getting blocked out. I don't know uh, if. Uh, oh, okay. In other words, if a page has no incoming links, you're probably not going to crawl. Yeah, yeah. We've got we can only get to it by. Uh, I mean, let's have a look. In other words, then you just follow links. Uh, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's more entirely true now, of course, because you can upload your. Yeah. Um, upload. Um, so it's So, uh, so they blocked. Actually, so now we might go and uh, we might go and crawl it next time we go because there's nothing there specifically stopping us from, uh, from crawling that that web page now, uh, unless there's a time out error. So, you know, hopefully next time round we'll go and get this information, come back with it, and it won't be blocked by by uh, robots So, um, but yeah, so so we got all that information. And that's also coming out in the CSV file as well. So if you wanted to go and find out. All the pages on your site, and that's cool. Another really good thing that you can do here is you can go and check everything anyway, because you can download this in CSV. And then, if, if you guys all come across Screaming Frog, I bet you have. Uh, but there's, oh there's yeah, free tool, uh, Screaming Screaming Frog, and Screaming. I think Frog, we were one of the first supporters, weren't we, Terry? Yeah, I think, I think so. Think when great. Dan started over there, mm -hmm. I think it's a great tool. So, so Screaming Frog and Majestic work really well together because you can take all this data from from uh, Majestic for your pages. And then you can flip um, Screaming Mog in, uh, Frog into list mode, so you can give it a list of links instead of just giving it a website, and it will just go and check all of those links for you. But you know, hopefully most of these have now been done anyway, and we've told you what's happening. And there's quite a lot of information given here, uh, because we, we'll tell you if it's a redirect, the type of redirect, we'll tell you if it's a, a 404. We'll also do some other sorts of information about, um, about whether, whether it's a server-side failure or, and, and uh, uh, as you can see, this one's a domain name resolution failure, which basically means that you know it's uh, it's not resol revol revol resolving, or at least it wasn't on the second of July, which was when we last checked it. So, uh, quite a lot of stuff you can do there. Oh, where am I? Okay, let's have a quick look at the other tools. Uh, so, what's the other another cool tool? Uh, here's one thing that I haven't told anybody that we've got now. Um, so, uh, you probably well, some of you will have already played with. Click Hunter in the past. I have, have looked okay. for hubs. Okay, this looks at hubs, and we actually changed this a couple of weeks ago, and I, I haven't got around to blogging about it yet. So what we used to do is um, in here, so you can sit there and say, right, take, sit there and take take ten websites that rank for a particular phrase, for example, and put them in here, uh, and uh, and then you'd go and find. Um, that were listed, listed um, all of them. So I'll just put a few in. So Hunt, and now we can start seeing. Um, obviously, you've got things like Blogspot, which has loads and loads, but TechMemi tech or iProfessional.com is linking to all of those sites, and this is the number of links that are going to each one of those sites. So New York Times is getting links from uh, Infopig.com, 130,000 of them. You can start seeing all of those. Um, you can also start seeing, and as you go down, you, this this starts looking at co-citations. So I've chosen a, some really big sites here, but if you go down to smaller sites and you choose four or five or or, or, uh, or up to ten within a certain category, then you're going to start finding hubs of authority in this list because you're going to see the sites that are linking to multiple players within that market with that vertical. So that's that's kind of really cool. 
And then we yeah, did some nice. stuff. We it's used a to citation finder. It's a wonder old Rand hasn't got a tool doing that. <laughs> well, maybe. Quiet. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, well, you know, he discovered co-citation a few months back. Did he? Yeah, oh, okay. God. <laughs> We've had this for three and a half years, uh, Terry, so, you know, if, if, if Ram wants to play catch up on that one. No, Terry, so Ram's got some really cool stuff. I'm not going to argue with that at no, all. I've never used I think, I think that we're, we, I think we're, we've got a, a bigger crawl. We concentrate just on the link data, so we don't do, uh, do um, other tools, but I think that, you know, uh, our link data is, I think our link data is the best on the planet. I really do. And, uh, you know, having to put that to the test on a regular basis, as I do, um, uh, as long as we're actually comparing like with like. Which... Yeah. Dave, I actually use this tool a lot with one of the guys we were working with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a. Citations for them. That yep. was the uh, last last week, and I haven't told anybody about this, is that this always used to be at um, domain level only. So you couldn't put in deep URLs. Um, and so now you could, for example, put in um, different the same website or deep, deep pages within a site um, and start seeing co-citations. So uh, if I just put in and do that, then we're going to start seeing websites that are linking to um, all of those individual pages within the BBC, so uh, of which we suddenly get a much smaller list because uh, people are not linking to these these individual pages, um, and we've just got um, uh, one link coming from sub Bukami vocation. Right, but I guess just so theoretically with that with the deep one, it let's let's say you know I've established you know here's our target page for a certain phrase. Here's our competitor's target page. Here's another competitor's target page, and so on. As opposed yeah. to the whole site, you just start actually isolating the, the landing pages that are ranking in Google, and then you could actually stuff those in there and see where which, where the where they cross over. Which is what I wanted to do, and that's what I was hoping when we produced this uh, this extra functionality to Click Hunter. I thought you could go to Google, type in whale watching, and uh, and and uh, bung loads in. So you know we've got. Uh, you know, while well, watching uh, these are actually URLs, but you've got deep links coming in here some, somewhere. There you go. So that, for example, that's, that's a estimated one. Right, and you could stuff those in in a query that's space together. But what I found was that uh, I really started finding finding some interesting story. You can see that I've got DuckDuckGo plugged in here, so uh, for the results are looking a little weird. Uh, but, uh, you know, everyone everyone needs DuckDuckGo, um, and uh, uh, so. What I found, though, David, was that very few websites were linking to deep pages within different websites. So, you know, we've just done this for the BBC and sort of four of the biggest pages in the BBC, and we're already down to just a list of four. Whereas, if we'd, uh, if we, you know, had the had the homepage of the BBC and the, the homepage of CNN, you know, they just there's millions. So, um, I found that uh, there was very little correlation between. The rankings uh, at individual URLs and external links to those individual URLs, but there was a correlation because uh, because of the the link juice going through the home pages of all those websites. So um, so the link juice was flowing internally, of course, and people are looking at external links into an individual page, which kind of bypasses you know if you've got links into an individual page, it bypasses having to go through the home page of a website. But nevertheless, as you start getting down to niche markets. You didn't need very many links to start making a difference, or you wouldn't need very many links to start making a difference, as long as they're good links. You know, um, those 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 citations, those hubs of authority, were harder to find at a, at a URL level than uh, than I expected. I was hoping to sit there and. Yeah, that, well, that makes sense, I guess, to a degree. You know, so yeah, yeah. there's a lot of you know. Again, we, you know, we've seen a lot of pages, you know, Terry ranking with far less links that they used to over the last few yeah. years, and so that internal, like like he's talking about, that passing of internal page rank is obviously playing a bigger role. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Dixon, wouldn't this also this tool would show you the sites that are most liable to link to a deep page number one and number two? They've got multiple links to this site, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So, so if very I very strong uh, candidates to get a link on that site because they've yeah. shown yeah. affinity to that type of content. 
Yeah, you, you do see straight away how many links are going into each of those pages. So it's quite a lot of information to take in. Um, and uh, uh, But if again, if you wanted to go and have a look um, at a site from the page's point of view, for example, so that, that you know, taking the BBC page and stuff, you can start seeing the, the code citation. But you can also see, uh, yeah, you can just see how prolific a, a relationship is. So whether it's one individual link or whether it's a site-wide link, that shows up. You know, really obviously in, in that in that key country report. So, uh, uh, did you see any correlation? I was reading in something by Kemper, right? Yeah. Where uh, in one of his penguin uh, deep dives, he was saying that uh, too many deep links, right, was yeah. a uh, really strong signal in penguin. Uh, a strong spam signal. Yes. Well, uh, okay. I'm not a fan of that theory myself, but okay. That, that logic, uh, possibly theory in in various query spaces. You know what I mean? Because there is some places that it's it, especially like a news site. You know what I mean? Like an e-commerce site that has a lot of internal links might look weird. A news site like Search News Central, not really, because people tend to link to the posts, not to the home page. You know what I mean? So I, I would almost think that's kind of query or or, or you know, niche specific. But let's say on an e-commerce site. Yeah. In a lot of cases, they're not going to have a lot of deep links. Right. That's just, yeah, it would probably look fishier on an e-commerce right. or something like that nature. Yeah, so again, sure. I don't necessarily subscribe to that point of view because all of Matt Cuts is a good example because all of the links, as we've established, are deep links to the blog page. And yeah, right. with Matt, the home page, the, the, the page that comes up is mattcuts.com forward slash blog. So, um, so I don't necessarily subscribe to that that theory. You know, that's that's a, a pretty good example of uh, of you know. Deep, a deep, you know, a site that's got more deep links to an inner page than to the home right. page. You know, well, I, um, I just noticed that a client that I'm working with, they have a lot of what I would call uh, links where the trust flow and and citation flow is much lower than theirs, and very high numbers, but they're not getting hit by any uh, link penalties. Yeah, and I think it, I it's still of summed it up to it being all because it's all pointed at the home page. Yeah, yeah, I, can't buy well, I, th I think the, the 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 trust and the quality of the the place linking is still going to trump, you know, if they're in deep or not. You know what I mean? I right. Think, I, personally. So in other words, a high quality place linking to a deep page probably not right. so bad. Right. Right. Well, some, but some mommy blog that's you know already yeah. in Google's <laughs> in their okay. you know sites. So in other words, probably a good premise or something to work from, but not a hard set rule. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, and, uh, and of course, we got this information anyway. I, I really should have started with this, really, but I, I didn't. I didn't go down the summary page, which I should have done. So this was the original page we looked at. But if we scroll down here, then we got this information sitting here. So we got the anchor text, and you can see the percentage anchor text. And I think this is much more of a signal when uh, when the top uh, top anchor text starts being, you know, um, non-branded. Yeah, non-branded. Then you're pretty much screwed. I mean, you were screwed. I, 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 see, that one I agree with. I've talked to some people with Penguin stuff lately, and that's the first thing. I'm like, you know, do you know like 40% of your anchors of all your links are to a non-branded term and like your brand yeah. term? Like the guy's brand term was 3%. You know, Absolutely. come on. That's that's a pretty solid giveaway, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, so this is Majestic SEO's page, and, and of course, our, that's our brand. That's our brand. That's our brand. That's our brand. So we're all carrying on down here, and uh, it's not until we get to here that we've got 1.17 percent of our uh, our URLs with search engine optimization. So yeah, that's and really a, I, I believe that one too. Yeah, that's that's something I look at. So. And uh, hopefully, oh no, there you go. Hey, we're ranking on the first page for SEO. So what are you going to do? So uh, we're not doing too badly. What are you going to do? He's logged in. Whatever. Yeah, you could, you could, <laughs> the CEO UK too probably. Yeah, it's probably probably personalized results. But you go and do it yourself, and uh, you know. But the thing was, we never tried to get there for that phrase, which is kind of uh, kind of interesting. Uh, what's a what's a tool? What's the what's the plugin you're using on your Google search results there, by the way? Uh, so this has got DuckDuckGo um, installed. So uh, and I've got Moz's toolbar here as well. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Which the, one is putting the data into the search? So I think that's what Dave's. This 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 is actually page authority and domain authority. So this is uh, Moz data. Moz. Moz data. And oh, so that's using a, a bar from Moz. 
Yeah, yeah. And then we also have down here. So if I go to, let me just go to a, a normal page. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go to his. Uh, so, uh, so we've got a Matt Carth, there's his home page. Um, we have down here uh, a plugin as well. So uh, down here, uh, we've got an extension for Firefox, and we've got another one for Chrome as well, uh, which brings the majestic results straight into your website as well. So you can sit there and see. Uh, oh, your, really? Yeah. So oh, this yeah. is a free plugin. Yeah, put a link into the chat here, and we'll stick it on the show page sure. after. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I did not know about that. Uh, so if you go to um, where is it? Majestic.com, tools, link, uh, majestic plugins. So here we go. We got the Chrome oh, one uh, and the Firefox nice. one. So here's a Firefox okay, one. Okay. Cool. So, I, will, I will be getting that. Um, someone grab that URL. I'll put it in. So does it have gauges? And when it's really high, uh, you're called a link whore? Yeah, it flashes red, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Um, it, I, I can. It, what it does do, I mean, it brings your link data straight in, so we can see the people that are linking directly to that page. You don't have to go to Majestic to go and get oh. the data. Oh, my so God. Go Jesus, right where has this thing yeah. been? Another wow. one of your well-kept secrets. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it out there now, you know. Good. <laughs> being busy. <laughs> so uh, you got all the anchor text here um, pulled straight in. Um, then you can just quickly go and have a look at some of the other tools, and that just takes you quick links into uh, into Majestic's site. Do, do you guys uh, does the Site Explorer have anything that breaks down um, you know, site wide and non site wide percentages and stuff like that? Or um, well, you know, I always just do it manually, referring domains, v total links, and and whatever. But uh, uh, yeah, I I don't remember putting that anywhere in there. All right, no. we should. Be, uh, I got a calculator here. That's what I do, Terry. Yeah, I basically just work. I work at a ratio based upon total lengths yeah. referring referring domains. So, so yeah, yeah that's what I do. The, uh, the Chrome one as well, actually. Uh, so if I want to go and have a look at Google's homepage, here's, here's the Chrome one. And now we've got it up in the right hand corner. So this is Google's homepage, uh, and you see the citation flow and trust flow, and you go and have a look at. Um, wow! Uh, so it gives you metrics on a page. At so when I'm on a page, it will tell me. What yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, like that. That's, that's, that's very cool. For reviewing like that. sites, that's pretty uh, uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, especially you know, again, if I'm running through list of you know penguinized, potentially you know crappy links, it's nice to have that too. I'll bet you it'll probably be part of my new toolbox. So I, I use this all the time. I use this all the time, and you know, and you sit there and have a look at uh, uh, at, at the stuff. Um, and of course, if, if it's a, a Facebook page or an internal page or behind a wall garden, this data is all nil. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If not, then you, you, you've got a, a really good uh, view of everything, um, and uh, and you don't even have to you know, half the time you don't even have to go to, uh, to to Majestic to use it. What you do here, this is this is an example of what we call open apps. So you can't get this data for free. You can get it on any account. Um, as soon as you've got an account, then you can you can pull this in because this has to pull. Uh, through APIs to, to get this information on the fly. So uh, you can't get this data for free. Um, if you oh, Actually, that's not true. You can get this page for free, um, and then all this other data needs to pull off of your account data, so um, so you've got to pull it in. Um, so you've got to have at least a uh, free account, eh? Uh, yeah, a free, uh, well, you've got to have a free account to, to, to pull in this, I think, um, and uh, and then any other data you're going to need a paid account to, to, to Oh, see. okay. Yeah. And if you do use it, please use the rate it. This little button here just shows you how much of your, your account you've got left as well. So if you're in a habit of keeping on pulling stuff, it's just a little battery of your uh, your resource meter as well. So that can be quite useful as well. So yeah, that's a. I, I mean, I, I use I do use that all the time, and uh, and uh, I think it's a, an excellent. I know uh, I've got. Uh, I'm writing a tool to kind of manage uh, reviews for out uh, for. Uh, Blogger outreach and stuff, and yep. uh, I'm going to add something that basically says, "Here, download this too, and add it to your toolbar for." Yeah, but I guess you could also uh, get that through the API. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, you don't have to have a. Um, 
yeah, basically, we, it uses technology called Open Apps. So there's quite a lot of tools that are using uh, that are built on Open Apps. So Open Apps is a little bit like Open Auth. So what what it does is rather than making a developer pay for reseller rights to all our stuff, so people like people like Cognitive SEO, for example, have reseller rights. So they can take our data, do what they like with it, add value to it, and, and put it out the other way. But you know, to be fair, you know, Cognitive SEO pays a lot of money for that privilege, you know, because yeah. we're spending a lot of money building it. Um, so I, I think it even bears noting, folks watching. Um, you know, I'm currently yeah. reviewing various toxic link tools. So if you're doing Panda and Penguin and stuff, and you might have this question like we did last week with with Dixon, is why Majestic doesn't have a tool to do this? It's because most of the major players out there are pulling Majestic data. So they, you know, I like, yeah, so, I don't know. You know, if you're if you're using Link Link Detox, if you're using Remove them, if you're using uh, link risk, or you're using uh, cognitive. They're all actually pulling uh, majestic data, so that's why they're they're not about to go and compete with their uh, their happy yeah. customers. The other uh, link research tools, uh, Dixon, they're also using your data. Or? I'm not saying all of them are, but uh, but a lot of them are. So this one, but but they're using them in, sometimes in different ways. So okay. uh, so this is Link Risk, which uh, is run by some guys up in in, in the UK. Uh, and actually, <laughs> I need to upgrade my my, my subscription. But this uses open apps. So, so what you do with open apps is rather than them having. Oh. And there we go, folks. It was great having him on the show. <laughs> what happened there? Apparently, he's. Well, I don't know. Yesterday, I got one. dropped once or so. and. Oh, uh, or his uh, connection went down for a second. Yeah, I've had that happen to me a few times, to be yeah, honest. I uh, yeah. last week as well. Google Hangouts are not quite but, there yet. How, how long he'll continue to talk before he realizes <laughs> that he's not yeah. he's not with us anymore? I don't know. My, <laughs> mine, mine started trying to connect itself right away. It started reconnecting back up to the session, so I don't know. But hey, we're an hour and a half in. Thank you, folks, and uh, thank you for Dixon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I had no idea some of those capabilities existed in there for the free. Well, and that's it. You know what I mean. I I remember when we had Raven Tools into a dojo chat, and you know people were saying, "Oh, dear, you guys should do this with the tool and do that." And they were like, <laughs> "They were like, well, we do actually." But so yeah, a lot of these tools, you know, there's so much stuff that that often, you know, you don't even know half of what's in there. You know. Oh, there so, he is. There you go. Back. I'm back. <laughs> <coughs> Pay the bill, Dixon. Woo. Pay that internet bill. Do you have a mic? Don't hear probably, you. Do. He's probably muted when you first come in at mute too, doesn't it? Check the mute up at the top right. Oh, I'm up now. There you go. Oh, You're back. Okay, there You're back. Good, yeah, that's what happens when you fly around the screen. Sorry about that. There you go. All right. Let's get my desktop back. <laughs> oh, I don't know where I was. Uh, right. So I've completely forgotten my train of thought there. Link so. risk. We were over at link risk. We were with Link Risk, that's right. So, uh, so Link Risk was an example of open apps. So what you do is, instead of Link Risk having to, so I'll just take you off the screen there. Uh, instead of, instead of uh, Link Risk having to spend huge amounts on our data, um, you, you actually use your own account within Link Risk. So you connect, uh, connect your open apps key. It's just a couple of buttons. They give you a key. Um, and then they can use your account to analyze the data. So. That's that's what the, uh, the the browser plugin down here is using. It's uh, what um, SEO tools for Excel uses. So Neil Bosma's got a Excel a SEO for Excel um, tool. I think Remove is using it. Uh, you've also got um, SEO Gadget in his uh, his Excel system works on it. Uh, and then uh, Francois is our French ambassador, and it's all in French, unfortunately. But he's built a Google Docs system that does exactly what you want. Dave, um, which uh, which starts uh, emailing you your new links every day out of Google Docs um, using Open Apps. So uh, you can start doing all sorts of cool stuff with Open Apps, and uh, and you don't have to you don't have to break the bank to have it. Really? So I could write an application using some of your using your data, and it wouldn't yeah. break me until I started really using it a lot. Well, no, it wouldn't. Uh, well, if if you want to develop a, an app and you think it's going to be good for the community and you're going to put it out there. Then we'd give you, uh, I, I, you know, I'd give most people open apps for three months for free, just so you can uh, build a tool and prove that it's, uh, you know, prove prove its business case, so to speak. Um, right. Then, if, as long as you've got, you know, a dozen or so uh, people using it every month, then then I, I wouldn't charge you for open apps. 
If you didn't, then you'd still have to actually have a platinum account to, to, to be able to do it. Um, but uh, but as long as you've got a dozen people or so using it, then then it's a value to society. Um, and then if you're going to be really good about it and you're going to really push it and push Majestic, then you know we we we've got the potential to reward you a little bit, not not necessarily a lot, but a little bit for uh, for the fact that you're adding value to our data. Um, that's that's the closest we've got to an affiliate program. You've got to actually do some work to get any money out of us. Yeah, but that's the way it should be. Otherwise, yeah. people just take take advantage of you. <laughs> yeah, as we found out, you know, and uh, you know, there's only so much you can give away for free when you're trying to crawl the internet every day. It's not cheap. No. <laughs> yes, that's. Uh, I would hate to pay your internet bill. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure of that. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's. It's quite a bit. So there we go. I think I've got as far as I uh, I need to really. I mean, I can I could go on forever, but we've already been on for an hour and a half or so. And uh, yeah, this, <laughs> we got oh, lots. We got lots, man. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, this is uh, great. Uh, the link to the uh, uh, toolbar and those tools that you showed us, the plugins and yeah. uh, to the open app. Those two links, I'd like to include them in the uh, post. So. Absolutely. Let me just uh, so so if you go to uh, to the majestic uh, plugins uh, page, then that's that's got the, the the links there. So if I just put that yep. link. Oh, so the the open app is there too, eh? Well, open apps. Uh, I'll give you a link to open to 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 a little video that explains open apps as well. Let me just uh, get you on get on the screen here. Hang on. So uh, this is for the plugins. Uh, uh, for um, browser plugins. And if you wanted to uh, build um, an open apps, then uh, you really kind of need to be. We need to give you access to open apps, but there is a little video on how it's all supposed to work, which okay. uh, I run now. But you can that's exactly what I was looking for. Have a look at it in your in your own time, and uh, that's got all the uh, um, information about uh, open apps. Um, so uh, it looks like you're typing, so you muted your mic. Okay, hang on. Are they unmuting my mic now? Nope, we're good. Are you good? That's fine. Okay. Google Google Plus is saying sounds like we're you're typing, so we muted your mic. Yes. Uh, so there we go. So I think we're there. I think we're there. Really? Yeah, it's been uh, great. Uh, uh, thanks to you. And uh, anything you want to add before you? Leave well, you know, I, I mean, there's, uh, there's. Oh wait, 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 wait! You guys had a, I got an email in uh, today. I don't have the right. email box open. You guys had some announcements or something because I remember seeing a majestic something going on in my email this morning. So what, what, what is today's announcement about? Okay, well, we just extended the amount of uh, data that you've got on your home page. We also f uh, there was a little one actually. So this little graph that we created the other day, uh, we've now got it, so you can get the, the data straight into the uh, in, in, into the, into um, tabular form if you want to. Some some little changes really. Um, the, uh, the 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 real uh, the real big thing was was changing that bringing out uh, that a new version of Site Explorer, uh, which was you'll have got the newsletter about it today probably. So oh, it would appear that so um, so this this new this layout is all new really um, for Site Explorer. This uh, this um, summary page. Um, is 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 a lot cleaner than the one before that we had before, and this this chart and stuff is new. So I you know I didn't talk about this. This just shows you what percent of your links are now followed, um, and which ones have been deleted since the last crawl, um, and which ones are in frames and stuff. So we seem to have quite a lot of uh, links here on this particular site in um, in uh, images, for example, over here. So uh, so that's the kind of stuff that's coming out. We um we. Yeah, we just increase the amount of data that everybody's getting. Um, Very cool. we, you know, we if if you if you have five thousand pages on your site, then we'll give you in the quick site explorer report all five thousand pages in here now. Whereas before, I think we only gave you a couple of hundred. Uh, we gave you lots of information about the backlinks, you know, two and a half thousand or so, but uh, but not um, but not the pages. So we just brought it all up to two and a half thousand, and it's really quick to get to as well. So if you want to go and see link number two and a half thousand, uh, you try and do that on another system. Um, you can't get to can't get to number two two and a half thousand until uh, until quite a lot of effort um, really but you can get there pretty quickly it would do that's link number two thousand five hundred there and then of course if you just want the report you just dig down so 
get the CSV download. So we're coming out with a lot of stuff um, uh, quite regularly, and we try and we try and launch on a Monday or Tuesday if we can. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way, uh, but that means we can just like test things over the weekend, make sure that uh, in beta it's all working. I say beta is sort of closed beta for ourselves, lots of debugging and stuff, because we've got you know quite a lot of we, it's quite a lot of people visiting the site. It's quite a lot of servers and. Uh, you know, it's not like WordPress where you can just like put a page up and change it. Um, you know, everything that goes up has to go across lots of servers to uh, to work. Okay, that's okay. a good uh, note to uh, end on. So, uh, for uh, Dave and uh, Dixon, I'm Tell Terry. You, I said at the start, though, Chris joined us, so uh, we'll end her for now, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, All right, mate. Thanks ever so much. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm impressed, Dixon. Very nice. Thank you. And everybody You're should good. just go make lots of money. Well, we, yeah. Well, as long as you can all talk about it on your forums, that'd be great. You know. <laughs> oh, Cheers, yeah, guys. We'll Thanks a lot.